This short, hands-on tutorial will walk you through the steps needed to create a simple platformer using premium content so you can become familiar with the main parts of Stencil's interface. Specifically, we'll show you how to create a new game, locate game resources, customize actors, create a scene, and test your game. Without further ado, let's get started. This crash course makes use of the crash course kit, which ships with Stencil by default. If it is missing, or if you deleted it, you can download it in the link in the description. Let's unzip the file as Crash Course Kit and place its contents under the Games folder. You can locate the Games folder by clicking on View Games Folder button in the bottom bar just after opening Stencil. When you first load up Stencil, you'll see a screen that looks something like this. This is the Welcome Center. From here, you can create a new game, open an existing game, or browse games that other people have created. Click the dotted square labeled Click Here to Create a New Game. Click on the Crash Course Kit, then click on the Next button at the bottom of the dialog. What are kits? Oftentimes, when you create a game in Stencil, you want to start with a kit, a game template that comes with sample resources and has things like setting and game logic already configured. The kit you're starting with here has all of the resources you'll need for the crash course. Next, a dialog like the one here will pop up where you can set the game's window size in pixels and name your game. We're going to name it Crash Course Game, though feel free to name it something else if you'd like. By setting the width and height dimensions in the screen size section, you are determining the size of the window, or view, that the player will see where he or she plays your game. In this case, let's go with the width of 640 and a height of 480, then click Create. You'll now be taken to the dashboard, a central area where you can see your game's resources such as graphics, sound, game logic, etc. Also, here you'll find the game's settings. From the dashboard, we can create new resources or import existing ones. The crash course includes the resources you'll need to get started, Let's go over them. We'll start by locating the actor that will serve as our playable character. In Stencil, anything that can move or be interacted with is considered an actor. This includes playable characters, enemies, user interface elements, etc. An actor type is a template for actors, while actor usually means a particular instance. Sometimes we use the two interchangeably to keep a language simple. First, click on the actor types entry in the dashboard's left sidebar. Note that you'll see a small number two next to this button. That indicates the total number of actors in your game. Similarly, the numbers next to the other resources indicate the number of other types of resources we have. Now, the actor types listing will appear. As expected, you'll see two actor types here, one called Mambo and the other one called Pronger. Mambo is going to be your player's actor. If you double click on the Mambo icon, Stencil will open it inside of the actor editor. We'll come back to this editor soon, but for now, let's check out the rest of the resources that we'll be using. Flip back over to the dashboard by clicking on its tab. Now open up Pronger, the actor we'll be using as our enemy. If you prefer to open things using the keyboard, type Ctrl O or Command O on a Mac. This will bring up a dialog in which you can type the name of any resource. Use the arrow keys to fine tune your selection and press the Enter or Return key to confirm your selection. Now let's take a look at our tile set. A tile set is a collection of rectangular tiles that can be used to build game levels, which are known as scenes in stencil speak. Click back to the Dashboard tab, and then click on the Tile Sets category. Open up the Grassland Tile Set. As you'd expect, an editor pops up in a new tab. This time, it's the Tile Set Editor. We'll return to this soon after opening a couple more things. Let's look at our sounds next. Click the Sounds button in the Dashboard. You'll see two sounds already there, Stomp and Jump. Feel free to open up one of the sounds. Last but not least, let's look at our behaviors. Shown here are the behaviors we'll be using in the crash course. Behaviors control all game logic and player interaction. They're what make every game tick. Let's take a quick peek inside one of these behaviors. Double click on walking to open it inside of the behavior editor. There's a lot going on here and we'll talk about it further later on. The behavior editor is a powerful tool that makes designing complex logic quite straightforward. We have a whole tutorial dedicated to helping you learn the workings of this editor though, so for now, just know that it exists. When you're working on your game, it's a good idea to save frequently. Just hit the Save Game button in the main toolbar to do so, or type Control S or Command S on a Mac. We've already imported some actors into our game, but they aren't very interesting just yet. Without behaviors, actors really can't do much at all. To breathe some life into Mambo and our enemy Pronger, let's take a second look at the Actor Editor and add the behaviors included in the Crash Course Kit. If you haven't closed the Mambo Actor yet, click its tab to select it. Otherwise, navigate to the dashboard and double-click the Mambo Actor from the Actor Types part of the library. The Appearance page of the Actor Editor appears. 
Skip over to the Properties tab by clicking its corresponding blue button at the top of the editor. Check to see that Mambo is a member of the Players group. This will ensure that Stencil will handle collisions how we intend. Groups let you categorize actors in order to tell Stencil what kind of actors should collide with each other. Groups can also let you treat different classes or actors differently. Feel free to take a look at the Collision and Physics tabs as well. They contain additional settings that let you customize how Stencil's physics engine treats the actor, but for our purposes, the default settings will work just fine. We're going to move on to the Behaviors tab, where the real customization begins. Start out by clicking the Behaviors button, which is right next to the Appearance button. The following screen will appear. Click on the Add Behavior button in the lower left-hand corner. When the dialog appears, select the Walking Behavior, and finally click on the Choose button in the lower left hand of the dialog to confirm your selection. We're taken back to the Actor Editor. Notice the addition of the Walking Behavior in the list at the left, as well as all of its attributes in the main window. Attributes are customization values that make behaviors reusable and easy to modify. Let's start customizing these attributes. Some of the attributes have default values that we can use, like speed, whereas others we'll have to set ourselves. First, change move right key and move left key to the right and left controls respectively. Next, choose the desired animations by clicking on the Choose an Animation button and selecting the animation sequences you would like. Let's add the rest and customize them in a similar way. To add more behaviors, click the Add Behavior button in the lower left-hand corner of the editor. For jumping, make the following modifications to the default values. Select the Jump key for jumping, and choose Jump R and Jump L for the Jump Right and Jump Left animations respectively. Finally, add the Jump sound so Sensible will play an effect when Mambo jumps. For the Stomp on Enemies behavior, set the Stompable group to Enemies and set the Jump key to Jump. For Mambo's last behavior, add Die in a Pit and Reload. However, there is nothing to configure here. Our enemy Pronger will be simpler to set up than Mambo. Switch over to his tab, or open him from the dashboard if need be. Click on the Properties button as we did with Mambo, and find the Group dropdown. Go ahead and change Pronger's group to Enemies. All that's left to do with Pronger is to add a single behavior. Click the Behaviors button and add the Stompable behavior, which is located under the Collisions category. Customize the following two attributes, and leave the others as where they are. As you can tell, this behavior makes Pronger stompable like a Goomba in Super Mario Bros. Pronger will die when hit from above and play a sound when this happens. If you click on the Edit Behavior button, you can peek at the code behind this behavior. Now that we have our resources in place and our actors configured, we can create a scene. Scenes are game levels that get populated with the tiles and actors that we've created. You can even attach behaviors to scenes, although we won't be doing so in this tutorial. First, we have to create a new scene. From the dashboard, click on the Scenes category, followed by the large dashed rectangle. The Create New Scene dialog will appear. Enter a name of your choosing. Let's have Stencil generate a pretty sky background for us by clicking on the color dropdown and selecting Vertical Gradient. Select two colors by clicking inside the white boxes and then clicking on the desired colors. Note that the first color box on the left selects which color the gradient starts with at the top of the screen, and the second color box on the right selects the color that the gradient shifts to moving toward the bottom of the screen. When you're all finished, the dialog should look something like this. Click Create when you're finished. The Scene Designer will open. The interface may remind you of some popular painting programs and is just as intuitive to use. Now let's add some tiles to our scene. They'll form the ground that our characters will stand on. First, make sure that the Pencil tool is selected from the toolbar on the left-hand side of the editor. Now, click on the upper left-hand tile in the Tiles section of the palette, which is on the right side of the screen. Place it in the bottom left-hand corner of the scene by left-clicking. Next, select the middle tile on the top row of the palette. With the left mouse button held down, click and drag to fill in the bottom row, leaving just a single spot in the corner. Finally, select the rightmost tile in the same row of the palette. Place it in the remaining empty spot of the scene's bottom row. When you select tiles to place, if you choose more than one tile in the palette at a time, you can place the group of tiles you have selected. Now, we get to add Mambo and Pronger to the scene. Click on the Actors tab in the palette and make sure that Mambo is selected. If you move your mouse over the scene, you'll notice that Mambo follows the cursor. Left-click near the ground to place him on the scene. If you hold down the Shift button, you could snap the actor to a grid. Now select Pronger and place a few of them in the scene as well. Your final scene might look something like this. To add gravity to our scene, press the Physics button between the Events and Background buttons at the top of the screen and in the Vertical Gravity selection, type in 85 to simulate real-world gravity. If you followed along closely, you're now ready to test your game. 
Click the test game button in the top of the toolbar to play your game. You can walk with the left and the right arrow keys and jump with the space bar. Try pushing the prong reactors around and try jumping on top of them. If you fall off the screen, the scene will reload. Note that you can also test your game inside of a web browser by choosing the test game inside browser from the file menu or pressing Control enter or command enter on a Mac. Congratulations, you've just created and tested your first game in Stencil. That's quite an accomplishment already, and we've barely even scratched the surface of Stencil's capabilities. Thank you for watching. If you liked this video, hit the like and subscribe buttons and stay tuned for more videos and tutorials.